Hello, grade 12 psychology class. Welcome back to another lecture. We have lesson four, the senses part two. You see it here, you see it here, and I have said it. So let's get into it with key point one, which is balance. So the body's sense of balance is regulated by the vestibular system inside the inner ear. It is, um, its prominent feature is three semicircular canals in the ear. Um, near the cochlear area, just near all those bones. And it has hair cells as well that project into the fluid within each of the canals. Essentially, those hairs can detect where, when those fluids are moving around. Uh, and when there's a deficiency in that fluid or when it moves around too much or too little, that's when you start to get balance problems. Um, or when the pressure in there is not right, there's a lot of problems that can happen. But balance is all about the vestibular system in your inner ear. When you turn your head, these canals also move. So inertia causes the fluid in the canals to resist the change in motion. And this bends receptors, um, those hairs that are projecting into the fluid. And that's how you can keep your balance. Even when you're moving, you can walk straight when you're looking that way um, because it's all regulated by these little hairs that project into uh, the fluid um, in your vestibular system. So the stimuli for the vestibular responses include movement. So we've all spun around and fallen down. Um, we've tilted our heads, tilted our bodies. Uh, we've been out of position. Essentially, whenever our bodies are doing something that might knock us off balance, that's when our vestibular system is responding or stimulated. So overstimulation of the vestibular sense by such movements causes dizziness, motion sickness, maybe seasickness if you've been in a boat before experience this on amusement park rides when there is too much movement and your vestibular sense is overstimulated you get sick um, so although you're often unaware of your sense of balance uh, as soon as you don't have a sense of balance you can tell so not too long ago for whatever reason for about three or four hours I uh, was kind of dizzy I couldn't walk straight and I had never taken my vestibular system um, so for granted, you know, I, I just appreciate it a lot now. Smell and taste uh, are another sense and we're going to group them into one because they are so related to one another. Uh, they're the chemical senses because their receptors are sensitive to chemical molecules rather than different stimuli like touch or light or sound waves. Uh, it's a chemical that you're sensing when you taste or smell something. So for you to smell something, the appropriate gas molecule has to come in contact with the receptors in the back of your nose, sometimes called the olfactory receptors, and it gets sent down the olfactory nerve. Um, these receptors send messages about the smells through the olfactory nerve to the brain. So these molecules actually have to get into your nose and land on there. So if you smell poop, there's poop in your nose, okay? That's just the way it goes. I'm sorry to say it. Um, when you taste something, it's very similar, but the appropriate liquid chemical must stimulate the receptor on the taste buds on your tongue. So this information is then relayed to the brain along with data about the texture and the temperature of the substance in your mouth, which are also super important for taste. Texture and temperature uh, play a lot into it, but here we've got a picture of um, a taste bud and the little nerves that are there. Um, when you combine taste, smell, and the tactile sensations like texture and temperature, that whole combination is what we call flavor. Taste, smell, texture, temperature, it all works together, and Gordon Ramsay um, would tell you that is absolutely true. Um, these sensations of warmth, cold, pressure, um, they also affect taste. You imagine eating cold chicken soup or drinking a hot soda, it is not the same thing. So these things are absolutely part of flavor. Uh, now imagine the textural differences between a spoonful of pudding and a crunchy chocolate bar. You'll see how the texture and temperature of foods definitely influence the taste. They are super important for the proper texture. Uh, if it's not the proper texture, when you're eating like a banana, well, like this, if it's crunchy, I'm spitting out this banana because it's not right. It all needs to go together. Skin receptors, skin senses. So skin has a whole bunch of different receptors that are kind of grouped into touch. 
Um, they're responsible with providing uh, the brain with four kinds of information, pressure, warmth or cold, and then pain. Uh, so sensitivity to pressure varies from place to place in the skin. So your fingertips are very sensitive. They're very densely populated with receptors. So they are able to feel things like pressure and temperature very, very well. But other spots like your calf or your leg or the middle of your back, there's almost no receptors there. So it's very, very difficult for you to feel a light touch there. You can feel a light touch on your face or in your hands very easily but not on your back or not in your leg, which is why, you know, have you ever had like a bug running up your leg and you're like, how did I not feel that? Well, you would have felt it if it was on your hand or on your face, but if it was on your leg, you have no receptors there. You just didn't feel that tiny amount of pressure. Uh, the most important touch sense would be pain. Um, many kinds of stimuli can cause pain uh, scratches, punctures, pressure, heat, and cold, they can all produce pain. But what they have co in common is that there's potential for injury to your body. So pain makes it possible for you to prevent damage to the body. You pull away from something hot or from something sharp. You feel something sharp on your foot, like a Lego, and you remove your foot from it to prevent yourself from um, causing damage to your body. So there's two types of pain sensations. There's the sharp localized pain that you feel immediately after an injury, and then there's the dull generalized pain that you feel later. So sharp when it actually happens and dull later on, kind of like a throbbing pain um, when your body is sending um, nutrients and uh, blood there to help heal that area. Um, so something that I know we've all done before is we've stubbed our toe and then we've grabbed it and we've squeezed it and we've like rubbed it. Um, maybe like when we have like a bruise, we hold it or if we hit our head, we hold our head. Why do we do that? Why do we hold that area? And that's what we do is we try to send more senses to our brain from that area to stop the pain. And this is called the gate control theory of pain. We can lessen some pains by shifting our attention away from the pain impulse or by sending other signals to compete with the pain. So if you rub your toe or you, you uh, give a lot of pressure to it, that'll create a bottleneck in the impulses that can be sent to your brain and reduce the amount of pain that you feel. This bottleneck or gate limits the number of impulses that can be transmitted. I always use, I uh, think of the uh, example of house if you've seen that show, uh, he has a lot of pain in his leg and he actually breaks his hand to stop the pain in his leg. So there's only so much pain that his body can feel, but he would rather have the pain in his hand to give himself the relief uh, from the pain in his leg. So um, that is the gate control theory of pain. Uh, to stop pain, we flood our senses with more stimulus. And we have our body sense, which is kinesthesis, which is our body position and our movement. It cooperates with your balance system, with your visual senses, with your hearing. Uh, you want to, main, to maintain your posture, keep you upright, uh, to keep your neck you know, solid so your head doesn't flop over all the time. Uh, keep your arms at their sides or swing while you're walking. Um, all of this, these senses, the sensation comes from the receptors in your muscles, your tendons and your joints, essentially where all the pieces of your bodies are. And without this sense, without the kinesthetic sensations, without this feeling of where your body is, your movements would be jerky and uncoordinated. We wouldn't have very much music like the piano. We wouldn't have sports. You would not be able to walk without looking at your feet and thinking, okay, this muscle moves to put this foot here. And then we put this foot in front that would that would be what you would need to do to walk without these kinesthetic sensations. You wouldn't know where your feet are unless you're looking at them. Um, you wouldn't be able to conduct surgery to like think about these things uh, and do the complex um, activities that are required. Playing piano, acrobatics, everything complex would be essentially impossible. Anything complex with movement would be impossible as we need the sense to know where our body is. 
Uh, yes, okay, so we have your job, which of course includes the important terms, and then you have to rank your senses. So as a duel to the death of your senses, uh, please give it a lot of thought, as losing each one has a lot of consequences. But thank you so much for watching, everyone. I will see you soon.